If any Indian airline was destined to succeed, it would have been Jahangir, Jaywadia's Go Air. For one, it had a head start of nine months on Indigo when it started operations in November 2005. For another, it started off conservatively, learning the ropes first with just two aircraft, then slowly increasing to 20 Airbus 320s in the first six years. They were right to be careful, as both Jet Airways and Kingfisher Airlines ran into turbulence during this period, began making losses and eventually shut shop. It was the perfect time for Go Air to expand, and it aggressively placed an order for 144 Airbus 320 family aircraft, which came with an option of a new Pratt & Whitney GTF engine that promised lower fuel consumption, lower emissions, was smaller in size, had less noise, less parts, and hence lower maintenance. The American company Raytheon that had developed the engine wanted to promote it and on behalf of Go Air paid Airbus the 30% down payment at the time of placing the order. A huge amount considering each plane cost about $80 million and they were buying 144 planes. The German carrier Lufthansa had already ordered the new GTF engines. So even though their earlier fleet of 20 had the other type of engine, Go Air felt safe enough to do so as well. Indigo 2 joined the party and placed a small order for Airbuses with GTF engines, becoming the first three airlines to do so globally. Within four months of Go Air getting the first GTF engine planes, in September 2016, an engine had to be removed because of faults. This happened with increasing frequency, with the engine tending to snag within 7,000 flying hours against the 12,000 promise, leading to Go Air changing or swapping faulty engines 510 times. And by March 2023, 72 of their 144 planes were grounded because they had no workable engines. While all this was happening, in late 2020, a tussle broke out between the 79-year-old father Nasri Wadia, chairman of the Wadia Group, and Sanjay, who founded and ran Go Air for 17 years. Ostensibly, overrides to the trademark of the company name and website domain, which IP intellectual property rights should have been with the company, but they were with Jay. However, both had different views of how the airline should be run. Six, nine. So despite the son having the board's and shareholders' approval to run the company for the next five years, the father ousted the son, giving the excuse with a view to professionalize the company. Something the senior Wadia did successfully at Britannia, the group's flagship company, where the Wadias have no operational role. His new CEO, Ben Baldanza, had spearheaded the IPO of Spirit Airlines after transforming the ultra-low-cost carrier into a profitable company a decade ago and was hired to do a repeat performance with Go. As all this drama was happening, the airline, now called Go First, piled up 10,800 crore of losses, $1.5 billion, first bitten by Covid and then stung with faulty engines. Pratt & Whitney promised to send them replacement engines but shortcomings in supply chains did not allow them to do so at the pace required for such a big fleet. We need 10 engines a month. You can't jump the queue. Other customers also need them. You will have to wait. To tide over the interim, the promoters put in another 3,200 crore of their own money, borrowed 5,000 crores from banks and dipped into the government's emergency credit guarantee scheme. To cushion the mounting losses, Wadia tried to raise 3,600 crores, half a billion dollars, at a valuation of 10,000 crore through an IPO. But at first, SEBI restricted them, and then later, the market fell after Paytm's listing, and so it had to be deferred. Then, Pratt & Whitney suspended maintenance, repair and overall MRO operations from May 2022, as Go First refused to pay endlessly for repairs. But when PNW offered to provide just two to three engines per month, Nusli dragged Pratt & Whitney to Singapore's International Arbitration Center. The organization will fall apart, Wadia told the emergency arbitrator Michael Lee on March 25th via virtual hearing. Besides quick delivery of the engines, Pratt & Whitney should compensate us $416 million for our losses, like they did with Indigo. For Raytheon, the world's largest aerospace and defense manufacturer, the compensation would be insignificant, a rounding error. But for Go First, it was a matter of survival. Their situation was desperate. Half their pilots had no work, but they still had to be paid. Lease rent EMIs were due, doesn't matter if the airline was grounded. Already 1,600 crore, $200 million was wasted like this, leading to go first, losing $25 million per month. If my 6,000 employees don't see relief coming, they will leave the airline. If the relief comes too late, I won't have anybody left. 
he has reason to be worried. The demand for airline professionals in India is skyrocketing at the moment. The Tatas have placed an order for 840 planes, Indigo for 500, and another low-cost carrier, Akasa Air, started flying in August 2022. Even without its engine troubles, Go first ran the risk of sliding into insignificance. Lee saw merit in Wadia's plea, but only partially. Pratt & Whitney will supply 10 serviceable engines every month until December 2023. What about the money? But he did not ask Go First to be compensated for its losses. Yet, even 37 days after the order by the arbitrator, not one single engine had arrived. And for the first time in its existence, the company defaulted on payments worth 2,600 crore, had unpaid vendors of 1,200 crore, and as some aircrafts were repossessed, oil companies began asking for immediate back payment. As revenue shrank, GoFirst was finding it hard to make daily payments for fuel. But the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back was when GoFirst's main lesser, from whom they had leased 10 planes, of which 9 were still flying, threatened to pull all their aircrafts. To safeguard their assets from repossession, the airline went into insolvency under the National Company Law Tribunal NCLT in Delhi, the first company to do so voluntarily. NCLT is something like Chapter 11 in US law, where payments to creditors are suspended and all assets are protected for a limited period of time till a revival plan is hammered out. The NCLT court appointed Abhilash Lal, experienced in private equity, consulting and financial services, as the interim resolution professional to run the airline. My plan is to revive it. However, things are always not as easy. Jet Airways has so far been unable to restart operations despite getting approvals as it is facing a lengthy insolvency process. Though the prognosis for Go First seems a lot better. I think you can start flying again with the 27 aircrafts you are left with. But it is unknown whether NCLT will allow the Wadias to run it once again, as a Supreme Court judgment disallows defaulting promoters from bidding for their company. However, Wadia may yet get into the saddle again, since the troubles were not due to mismanagement. Go First made money the year before COVID. Early signs of revival are encouraging, with Go First securing interim funding of 450 crore, potentially paving the way for the grounded airline to resume operations. While Go First was the worst hit, estimates suggest that about 133 aircrafts worldwide are grounded because of faults with Pratt & Whitney GTF engines. These include big carriers like Lufthansa, Indigo, ANA, Hong Kong Express, Turkish Airlines, Air Senegal, United Airlines, JetBlue, Swiss Air and Air Baltic. While Indigo also faces problems with Pratt & Whitney GTF engines, its larger fleet of more than 300 aircraft with diverse engines has not affected them as much. However, it is surprising that Pratt & Whitney engines, which are so widely used in both civil and military aviation, with over 85,000 engines in service and more than 16,000 customers worldwide, could fail so badly. As a result, however, Go First, which operated flights to 29 domestic and 10 international destinations, became the 11th carrier to fail in a decade. But the irrepressible Nasli Wadia has gone on the attack and filed against Pratt & Whitney in a Delaware court in the US to enforce the Singapore arbitration's order. Baseball's Limerick There was an airline called Go Air that thought its engine maker was unfair. The planes were all grounded by the lessers they were hounded. It was a situation in which they had got ensnared. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.